Hi, I'm Everett. Welcome back to the shop. Uh, this is part two of the, uh, well, hydraulic cylinder and mount modifications for a, uh, you know, cab over highway tractor. Um, last time we did the mill work on the ends of the cylinders and uh, modified them. Uh, now what we need to do is use the lathe and uh, modify the mounts for them and uh, adjust the safety guard so it'll actually work with the new cylinders. So, hope you find it interesting. So for setup of this part, we're using the four jaw. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, super precise like a, a, you know, jet engine shaft. So really what we just need to do is cut a shoulder here for some clearance on the, uh, uh, on the uh, hydraulic cylinder. What we're doing here is we're just using this, uh, the live center poked into the end, pushing the part against the chuck. I'm using the, uh, the jaws here that uh, and using the step on the jaws the one jaw is a little further out so because of the imbalance we can't really spin it very fast but this will work just fine for our purposes but well, that's kind of nice because this part here is a little bit more freehand than uh, you know having to be uber precise buys a little bit of forgiveness <laughs> Yeah, the lathe is still shaking a bit. All right. So the outside of the tube is 1.75 inches. So we're going to have to go a little bit smaller than that. One inch six eight eight. Well, there we go. That'll work. One inch six ninety. Stop point. Now, at a certain point, this is going to be an interrupted cut. I mean, it's leaving a reasonable finish. Not super shiny, but it'll work. <laughs> Granted, who knows what grade of aluminum this is, too. And that is that. Because I can feel the uh, end of this stub here. It's just barely sticking out. Uh, the end of this is actually flush with the backside there. And so we can now swing this uh, cylinder all the way around. So when the big bolt with the big washer goes on here, that allows this to pivot in relation to the frame. So, yeah, a little bit. I'm just going to take one little skim off here to chamfer this edge just a little bit. We'll file the outside just to take the, uh, take the burr off. And uh, that part's done. <laughs> Good enough. That will that will work for our purposes. Now on to the uh, trickier one. So this piece here is going to be a bit more of a challenge because it's shorter, and it's just this way because of the spacing on the frame in order to reach the uh, uh, mount points on the cab um, with or with the other end of the cylinder. Now because of that, uh, I have really. Uh, I have to go up to this top, um, this top step here on the jaw. When I do that, I mean, I can still use my 
tailstock to line it up. However, I got nothing to nothing to line up the backside with. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use just the stock of a uh, machinist square and an adjustable parallel. We'll line up seriously. Line up our adjustable parallel like so. Hold the stock of our square against the jaw. I'm gonna say this will be plenty accurate for what we're doing here. Set our adjustable parallel under the bottom gently against the parallel. The other jaws are loose. So now we can just bring them up to touching. There. And for the purposes of what we're doing, that will be close enough as far as uh, being centered. Yeah, that looks pretty good. For what we're doing, that'll be, that'll work just fine. Just gonna give the jaws a little snug again. Sweet. This one here again is going to be a little trickier because we're going to have to go down almost to that surface there. So here's hoping, because it's interrupted, here's hoping it doesn't come flying out of the truck. to see out here because it's you know what only one one portion of it but there is material swinging out here I gotta keep my fingers clear yep and I mean this is a casting so it may not be perfect yet either all goes well that should be right about where we need to be because I think it was just about to that uh, surface that we needed to be as far as depth for clearance to our weld and that I would say is happy right there yeah I like it again we'll chamfer the shoulder there So we have a chamfer on that shoulder. Now, this area, or this little hole here, uh, used to have a bolt with the head right here, shaft going through, not on the other side of the frame. I don't want to lose any more meat than at all possible here, so we're going to use a little different strategy. 
So I was originally thinking about making a threaded sleeve for this size, this side, but yeah, decided against it. Um, the hole is actually just the perfect size, uh, well, yeah, pretty much the perfect size to thread to a, you know, three quarters coarse. And so that's what we'll do. And when I go to put the uh, bolt in here, or when we tighten it up, we'll use some blue Loctite. That is what we're going to do. I haven't had a chance to get my vise mounted yet. It's not a big deal because, as I say, the hole in the frame can easily be enlarged just a little bit from 5 eighths to 3 quarters. There we go. That will work just fine. Yep. Nice three quarter coarse thread there. I wanted to use a coarse thread because it's aluminum. And then this way I can cut the bolt short enough that uh, once the head is up and snugged up against the frame, we can make sure it's flush on this side and we have clearance to our, uh, to our rim. All right, so one last task I have is to um, well, basically, we have to mill out the end of this, uh, well, it's basically a, uh, a safety catch. Uh, when the cab is up and the uh, cylinders are extended, you flip this down, and that keeps the cab from coming down should you lose hydraulic pressure. The thing is, the uh, rods on the original one are one inch. Uh, the rods on the new cylinders are inch and a quarter. So I have an inch and a quarter end mill in the, uh, in the chuck. The uh, reason I'm doing it in here is because I can't set it up in the lathe, it's too long, or sorry, a uh, milling machine, it's too long. I've already centered it um, on the piece of material. Uh, the, it's clamped down, shimmed up, set up as best as I can set it. Let's see how this goes. Seems to be working. Horizontal boring mill would be very cool. I just don't have a space for one. Brian's got a really cool one. Nice big one. There we go. Now, near the bottom here, I'm just going to have to clean that up with a file. Because I can't raise the, uh, like I can't raise it like I can with a horizontal boring mill. But what we are going to do is we're going to take the sides out by about 20 to 25 thou either side. I'm happy with that. Like I say, a little bit of cleanup with a file for this this little bottom uh, lip here on both sides, and we're good to go. 
So all in all, uh, all things considered, I would say that uh, we experienced success tonight. Got our uh, mounts modified to fit our modified cylinders. Uh, we got our, uh, you know, mounts set up ready to uh, bolt to the frame tomorrow. And we got our uh, safety guard all modified so it'll actually fit the new cylinders. Again, I didn't take anything away from the structure up here or whatever. I just opened up the hole here a little bit to, uh, or the slot, so it slides over the, uh, slides over the, uh, uh, the rods. So, anyway, I am going to go get a few hours sleep here before I have to go to work in the morning. And uh, we'll get these uh, set up in the truck tomorrow and plumbed in. All going well. I'm hoping to have a little bit of, uh, you know, some pictures or a video or whatever to, you know, give you some uh, context once it's done. This is the upper, uh, the upper mount and the safety catch and the guard there. That helps to avoid getting crushed if you have it the other way, or, you know, tilted more toward the frame and it starts coming down. This is the passenger side mount with the uh, you know, shoulder taken back. The uh, lines hooked up. Had to replumb this a little bit differently from the original. driver's side. Basically reuse the lines that were there and just put a 90 degree fitting in there. Still have to tie the lines back as I say. So here's our hydraulic pump. Um, this little lever here is what controls our uh, direction of flow and the thing is once it reaches a certain point you know in its operation once it tips past center then, like it says there, it says uh, it auto descends, and that's I don't know if you saw there when it started speeding up. That's when I grabbed the lever here and started pulling back on it, and uh, you know using that to throttle the uh, the speed at which the um, the cab was actually descending on its own. So to flip it back up, we just put it to you know up here to re uh, up here to return, and then uh, start pumping, and it brings it back down onto the frame locks into one of these on the other side those are the uh, those are the cab pin locks on the back so that they're the latches so that you know it keeps the cab from tipping forward and up like when you're driving so anyway I figured you all might find that interesting this is only the second cab over I even touched in you know 29 years so it's been a bit of a learning curve for me so once again thank you for watching thanks for subscribing um, thank you for all the comments and the little thumbs ups that people have sent and uh, thank you for everybody who's emailed in saying hello and sharing some of the stuff that they know or some of the projects they're working on. Um, I really enjoy seeing other people's projects because I learn from them. So don't be, you know, don't feel, uh, <laughs> don't feel like you don't, can't, you know, send me a message if you want to. So I'm just, I'm just a regular dude just like you messed around in my garage. So like I say, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you all next time.